to another exciting episode of WC Conversations. I'm here today with Patrick Earl, Economic Development Officer at Wheatland County. I'm Jamie Cramble, Investment Attraction Specialist. And today our guest is Heather Dubel. Uh, she is a realtor at Royal LePage Benchmark. Heather, welcome. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself, Heather, and the business that you work for? Sure. Um, I'm with Royal LePage Benchmark. Uh, we have a, an office in Strathmore, and uh, I actually look after that office. But we also have offices in Calgary, in um, Cochrane, and um, also in Canmore. So 180 agents, so big office. But uh, we do, um, myself and my team, so I have a team of five people. We look after Calgary and everything sort of an hour and a half outside. So all the little hamlets and towns. Um, and do a lot with the, as I live in uh, La Alta, do a lot on the east side with uh, Wheatland County. Awesome. So you're a hometown team then, living yes. within the county borders. And how That's long have you been uh, in business as a realtor, Heather? Um, on the resale side for seven years, but on some level of real estate for about 23 years. Wow. So we have a veteran of the industry with us today, which is great. You'll bring yeah, all that 35 expertise. years old. That's right. Wow. You, you definitely look young. <laughs> Patrick, you look young too today with your recent haircut. You must have done that special for our videos. <laughs> Sorry. Just yeah, I, I got I got sick and tired of looking like a BG. So yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, so Heather, can you tell us a little bit? I kind of wanted to talk about uh, you know the west side of the county today and kind of the opportunities that are available in that area. I know you're fairly familiar with the Lyalta area, which is just uh, north uh, northwest of the number one highway, if I'm correct. Would you be able to tell us just a little bit about the area, uh, some of the opportunities that are available there, you know, what you have for listings and then something about maybe about the services in that area as well? Sure. I think that the biggest keywords for both of those areas is accessibility and affordability. Mm -hmm. So everything in Wheatland County, you know, is extremely accessible. So let's yeah. start with Lyalta. You've got, you can come in off 564, which is Country Hills out of Calgary. Um, soon to be, you know, within the next couple years, paved will be McKnight, so you can come in that way as well. And you've got accessibility off of Highway 1. So, you know, really good accessibility. Plus, if you look at the cost per, per acre um, compared to if you're going west of, west of Calgary, say, or even south, uh, the value is definitely there. So we're seeing a lot more growth because of that. Um, the other thing for building is, uh, especially for um, doing types of commercial, is that it's flat. So right. you're not dealing with, you know, large hills that you've got to contend with. So, yeah. you know, most of the land that you purchase is going to be usable, which is helpful. So <clears throat> La Alta, um, just a bit of background, used to be, a, it still is a small hamlet. Uh, the uh, CN rail line from Drumheller comes through it. Uh, the, the rail line really isn't used anymore, um, but there's still the grain elevator is still there. Mm -hmm. um, but again, good, good accessibility off of Highway 1, off of 564. So you've got pavement all the way through the county, which is helpful. Right. Um, the, uh, the corridor on Highway 1 is, you know, industrial, going to be in heavy industrial in the future so you've got a lot of businesses coming that way so if you look at the businesses that could be there uh, i'd say more in my opinion more of a, a light industrial focus because you you do have communities close by um, right. but also agricultural based focus so right. you know say you wanted to run your hobby farm or even you know an anything like that or you're doing some sort of manufacturing uh, you do, like I said, the accessibility is there. Sure. Uh, the other, the other thing is that there is one community currently, uh, Lake Samirfield, which has a build out of 700 houses. Currently, yeah. we're at about almost 200. So, if you were going to do um, put in a business, you've now got some accessibility to one housing for your staff, but also staff. Yeah. So. You know, there's going to be, say, 1,400 people that live in a community that are going to be looking for employment close by. Sure. And so, also the, the accessibility to Strathmore and Calgary would be key, key factors in that. Right. I believe it would be a, a quite a quick commute from, you know, either Chestermere, 
Calgary or even Strathmore to that area. If I'm not, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, it sort of almost sits in the middle of the triangle. So mm. you're sort of 15 minutes, 20 minutes in any direction from Airdrie, right. from Strathmore, from Calgary, and from from Chestermere. Sure. Um, you know, so we we see a lot of movement from those areas coming into Lyalta because yeah. one, it's you know, it's good value for on the housing side, good value. Um, yeah. But also it won't be huge. So we're going to have, you know, a small gated community of only 700 houses. We're never going to be a Calgary or an Airdrie, um, right. you know, so that's a good draw for people. Um, also, just north of us is uh, a property for sale that is now zoned residential. Uh, there's okay. 580 acres. It was a community that was uh, that was going to be approved and then they they didn't quite make it. So now they're selling off the parcels. But if somebody wanted to come in and create, uh, you know, the area structure plan is in place. So if somebody wanted to come in and create a community of, uh, you know, the the ability to do that is there. Wow. Uh, the other amenities in the community er, in Lyalta is the Lyalta Community Hall. It's been there yep. for many, many years. Many people have played baseball there, <laughs> at baseball tournaments. But, a, you know, a great gathering place, commercial kitchen for... Sure. Um, people in the community so. so with the Lyalta community or sorry the Lakes of Muirfield community that you referred to as the 700 home development does that create opportunities then for commercial businesses that might come in and provide services to those residents you know whether it be you know service station or some sort of a retail outlet or a grocery store type of thing yeah so there's five acres of commercial uh zoned on site right uh, there is a building there that um uh has the ability to have different operations in it and then around that so the goal definitely would be to have a gas station uh mm -hmm. there has been talk with you know service providers but we're just not quite at the numbers yet but if yeah. somebody wanted to come in and make a go of that that would definitely mm -hmm. be helpful um you know grocery hairdresser something like that yoga studio um mm -hmm. you know and any types of those businesses for sure because it's not just it's not just the 700 houses, but there's a lot of, of farms and ranches close by that are also a draw. You know, they don't want to drive necessarily into Strathmore or into into Chestermere. So, you know, they, they want somewhere local. Right. So, it's, you know, it's a, it's a good destination place. So when we talk about that area, there's the, the, the hamlet of Lyalta, there's the development, the new development, which is Lake Samir Field. And then there's also surrounding residents who live in that area, like you said, on rural properties. Correct. So it's kind of a mixture. So there'd be opportunities for commercial businesses to come in and provide services. And there would also be opportunities for, for example, maybe like an agricultural, a company that comes in and like does value added agricultural products, like does processing of wheat or grains or, you know, uh, takes some type of a, a feedstock and, and does further processing with it. If Would that be correct? Yeah, and if you look at um, 264, there's on Range Road 264, there already is quite a few um, commercial businesses that mm -hmm. are doing different things. Um, so, there, you know, and if you look at, at the zoning requirements, like what discretionary use is for ag land, like, you, you know, it's quite varied. Mm -hmm. So I think sort of the sky's the limit as to what, what could be in those, in those areas. And again, you've got good value. So yeah. we're looking... You know, anywhere from five thousand an acre to twenty-five thousand an acre, depending on where it is, what services are to it. So, right. you know, good value and 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 easy accessibility, as I've said. Wow, that is absolutely great value when you're looking at the proximity as well. Um, and you go, you starting at five thousand per acre, going all the way up to twenty-five. I get that. That's awesome value for an investor. Um, what kind of a services are typically available in that area? I know it varies depending on the location and the property, but. Um, well, you're going to have uh, power and power, definitely uh, yeah. gas, uh, water. Lake Samirfield has a water treatment plant um, right. for incoming water. Uh, we're working on the uh, the outgoing tertiary plant uh, right. and where that's going to end up. I don't know. The county has quite a few plans for that. So they want to create, obviously, you know, water, water and sewer become the issue in any, any yeah. development. So, yeah, I think that's the story and wherever you are in economic development is uh, the deep <laughs> services and providing them, you need the kind of the numbers there. Awesome. 
Yeah. Uh, and I guess as well, talking about the likes of Muirfield, it, it could potentially create a opportunity for people who obviously who want to work from home, but also for businesses that there would be sort of a pool of potential uh, like knowledge workers or uh, white collar professionals potentially who might be living in that in that subdivision as well, who might be able to work at local businesses in the area, whether it be uh, accountants or potentially engineers or any sort of other professionals. If I'm not wrong. Yeah, so uh, we've seen, you know, a lot of growth in Lake Samirfield is uh, professionals coming out of Calgary now right. definitely working more from home than they ever were before. Uh, so, yes, so it's it's a really wide demographic of people. So definitely you could pull in all kinds of workers mm -hmm. and, you know, and they want to work in close proximity to where they live. Right. I hear you. Awesome. Yeah, well, that's good to hear. Uh, definitely as a county. We're looking at uh, two focus areas on the west side, obviously that Lyalta area, Highway 1, where you have the Origin Business Park. And then if we go further south, we go down to the Carsland area where the Goldfinch Industrial ASP is. And that's also on uh, the CP rail line. Uh, are there a lot of listings down in the uh, Carsland area available for businesses that would be interested or? I'm sorry, can you say that again? Like you just cut oh, out. Oh, <laughs> okay, sorry. I was just talking about the Carsland area in the, so if, if we go from the Lyalta area and we go down, uh, we, we travel south in the county along that western border of Wheatland County, you would then come down to Carsland where we have our uh, uh, Goldfinch Industrial ASP area. So I'm just curious, are there a lot of, uh, is there a lot of available land in that area at the current time or? Um, currently, like in the actual area structure plan, there is a lot of land. Currently, it is not listed. Okay. Uh, it, whether or not it would be available is a different thing. A lot of those right. land deals are done, you know, neighbor to neighbor um, and sort of people knocking on the door. So, yeah. you know, there, there definitely is going to be some interest as that area grows. Okay. Because it's, you know, you've got a huge seven seven thousand forty three acres in that yeah. area structure plan um and zoned in three different ways so you've got the industrial the light industrial and the mixed use right. so you know again you've got that huge variety of of availability of people bringing in certain businesses so you know they're just going to need the land to do it but the like you said it a, a lot of it currently is being done neighbor to neighbor Understood. So if there are uh, potentially farmers or landowners out there whose land sort of falls in that area, uh, it could be a good opportunity for them to maybe get in touch with you and list that property for industrial uh, development. Yeah, we see a lot of, you know, that's the hard thing for people that are looking to do any type of agricultural purchase mm. is that the, their ability to know about it is very minimal because right. it's, you know, and so when something is listed, it definitely sells quite quickly generally because people are waiting and they, yep. you know, you, you can't go knock on a farmer's door and see it, you know, just when they're not very receptive, but uh, to, you know, again, that's how most of the dealings are done. So that they, they never get the opportunity to purchase. Understood. And that's kind of for our viewers who may not be familiar with that area, that is kind of Wheatland County's uh, industrial area where we have very large industrial uh, uh, companies like Nutrien, Orica, Federated Co-op. We have uh, Richardson Pioneer, Cargill and Stella Jones down there as well. And they're all clustered in an area that's very close to the town of Carsland. So would you be able to talk a little bit about that with Carsland? And then I understand there's another uh, neighborhood close to their spear grass, would that be a potential source of, of labor for a business that was coming in and wanting to establish in that area? <clears throat> yeah, I'd say, you know, very similar to Lyalta, you've got two communities, so Carsland and Speargrass. Um, Speargrass is, uh, is very similar to Lakes of Muirfield, so golf course community. Um, Definitely you have people like people want to work close to where they live. So there hasn't necessarily been as many opportunities. So mm -hmm. as those communities grow, you're going to have that again, that work base. But you've also got a base of uh, two, two nice choices um, with reasonable prices of people mm -hmm. to live who are working for you in right. in those, you know, in the Goldfinch area. 
Excellent. And do you know uh, within that area of the Goldfinch area that we talked about, uh, what, what services are available there for businesses? Um, same thing. It depends on what land you're purchasing. So, yeah. you know, you may have a well, you may have power to the lot line. It, it's all going to depend on the location. Understood. Um, yeah, excellent. Uh, what kind of opportunities can you see for that area? Like what, what would be a good fit with that area if an investor is coming in and saying, okay, I'm looking at the Goldfinch ASP, what, what kind of a business would fit nicely into that? Well, the, I, I think anything manufacturing wise, something right. that where they need to move things. So, you know, we've got rail there, which is definitely an advantage. And mm -hmm. we've also got good access again off 24. So, you know, if you're if you have to truck things in and out or again, take it on rail, then you have that ability, which yeah. is is difficult to find uh, yeah. something that encompasses that. Sure. Yeah. And like we say in the county, we like to promote the fact that we have both rail carriers. Uh, CP Rail Line runs it long through Carsland in the south, and that goes from Calgary to Saskatoon, if I'm not wrong. Uh, and then in the north, when we were talking about Lyalta, there is a CN Rail Spur that goes there as well in services. I believe it's an elevator up there. Um, so potentially we have a continental, continent-wide rail carrier I understand CP's been in discussions with an American railway to create a sort of a single carrier rail that would go all the way from uh, Canada to Mexico. So there's that option as well. And, and recently we're seeing more and more interest in having rail. So, right. you know, I, I, I'm not quite sure why, what, you know, as a, as a transportation thing, it's sort of faded away, but it's definitely mm -hmm. coming back again. So and and I think just to it, a lot of it is the 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 more interest in in coming east of right. Calgary. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. We've been hearing that when we talk with various uh, realtors that a lot of businesses in Calgary are very interested in selling and then establishing in a lower cost location such as Wheatland, and they're just sort of waiting on the sale of a facility in order to do that. So there's we're definitely seeing the demand, and I think we're also seeing on the residential side a sort of a steady incremental growth in in the rural population or or the population in the county rather is that kind of what you've found as well well there's definitely you know the uh if anybody's watched the real estate market at all the covid the covid shift in the positive direction yeah. has been unbelievable and it's not it's not necessarily just because i want to be out of the city a lot right. of it is affordability you know i can get a house in say say cars land for two hundred thousand dollars or three hundred thousand dollars, that in in the city is going to be five hundred thousand right. dollars, and I now work remotely, so mm -hmm. I can live where I want to live. I can have the lifestyle I want to have, and I don't necessarily have to travel to work. So we're seeing that we're seeing a lot of influx from out of province, especially Ontario. Oh. So um, their plan was to retire here. Uh, their kids may be here, and again, they can work remotely. So they're making that move sooner than later. Uh, you know, because they have, you know, very high prices in Ontario or Vancouver. So yep. they're coming here. So we're seeing yeah, huge shift. It's just a huge shift all over the place. Uh, people needing different things in their housing. Excellent. So we're kind of seeing then is that people are getting better value for their money, but also an increased quality of life by moving to the county, getting away right. from kind of the urban congestion and the closely packed urban centers and the density and they're kind of just they're, they're, they're getting a taste of our open skies and the fresh air and you know putting a bit of that money maybe in their savings account versus into all into a, a property <clears throat> yeah well and they're saying that people are spending now we used to spend 20 percent of our income and because right, right. travel and now we're doing about three percent so right, right. interest rates are low so there's you know there's it's a really good opportunity to move but also yes we have some of the best value for housing, um, whether it be an acreage or being, you know, a, a single family or, or an attached dwelling anywhere in, you know, in surrounding of Calgary, for sure. Excellent. And how far would the Carsland area be from Calgary? Uh, you're about 40 kilometers. 40 kilometers? Yeah, okay. Experience. Yeah. And the Lyalta area, how far would that be from Calgary? We're 14 miles from the edge of Calgary. Okay. So proximity in both areas, obviously, uh, Lyalta being a bit closer to the Calgary border, but yeah. uh, Carsland also having that rail link for a business. Yeah, well, and especially if you, you know, if you're used to, say, uh, an Ontario 
a Toronto commute, say, yeah. and you did have to commute into Calgary, then it's it, it's easy. You know, yeah. a 40, 45 minute commute for somebody out of province is yeah. is simple. But also, you know, like you touched on like shopping. So yeah. so going shopping in in somewhere like Strathmore is is very uh, enjoyable compared to going into a lot of the places in big cities. You know, sure. people people are definitely friendlier. There's less yeah. lineups. There's parking. Um, you know, it, it's just it's a, a way better experience than yeah. it is. It, it's a bit, you know, people are seeing it as a better way to raise their kids for sure. For sure. No, I completely understand. And, and just to put a bit of perspective around the, the commuting distances, uh, when I travel from the north of Calgary down to the south of Calgary, that's easily 40 minutes to an hour, depending on traffic. So Correct. when we're talking about 20 minutes, roughly 14, 15 minutes from the border of Calgary to Lyalta, that's that's straight, basically highway. Yes. Uh, and along the highway one corridor there, um, there's like one traffic light and it's pretty much highway speeds and a very enjoyable commute as well, I might add. Well, and even if you're going to the mountains, like from Lyalta to the mountains is about two stop signs. Right. <laughs> so and we can see the mountains too from we our- We can see the mountains we very well. Background. Yeah, so it, you know, and it, and we moved, we moved to Lyalta from Calgary. I was born and raised in Calgary um, and thought I was a city girl, but no more. You know, I, I like the fact that a bird wakes me up in the morning, not, yep. not a, necessarily a motorcycle, but it, it, it's a different, it's a different pace. Sure. Motorcycle or an ambulance. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's definitely the quality of life factor there as well. So you handle both commercial and residential properties. Right. Um, yeah, okay. So if companies wanted to get in touch with you and, and, and find out more about what's available, how would what would be the best way for them to reach you, Heather? Uh, probably my website, which is okay. heatherdougal.com. Okay. And all my contact information is on there. Perfect. Patrick, did you have anything to add? Are you still there? I'm here. I'm just saving on the bandwidth. Oh, okay. Did you have anything so, to add, have Patrick? Any questions for Heather? Or? Um, he Heather. Um, I mean, we talked a bit about residential, but um, uh, what what's it like for broadband service in the lakes of Mirfield and Lyalta, Carsland, Speargrass, etc.? Do you know? Uh, Lake Mirfield is Shaw, so uh, you know we have the same services that you would have in in the city. Um, most of most of Carsland and Speargas would be Shaw as well. Uh, Telus has more of a presence down there than they do here, for sure. And then you've also got ExploreNet. Oh, right. Okay. So, so those people potentially moving out of Calgary don't have to worry about um, that rural uh, connectivity issue that uh, that might be assumed out in these uh, hamlets. No. No, yeah. we're not. We're everyone thinks we're in the middle of nowhere but we're really not so it's uh like i said probably say in lake samirfield probably at least half of the residents work from home um you know myself and my husband both realtors so we use a lot of data and uh, have no issues so you know the odd day there always there always is i think post covid there's been more issues than not because everybody is at home but uh definitely same service as we've as we experienced in Calgary. Right. That's yeah, that's that's one I wanted to pick up on just uh, we hadn't talked about it. So, yeah. OK, excellent. Well, thank you, Heather. We appreciate your insights into the areas. Uh, for any more information, you can contact Heather at the details she provided or for more information on investment in Wheatland County, you can go to infinitewc.ca, I-N-F-I-N-I-T-E-W-C.ca and check us out for more information. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Thanks, guys.